In this video, I'll be showing you how you can automate the bulk installation of Windows MSU update installer files. It's a big pain when you have to click on each installer file and then manually install each update. That can take a lot of time. So what we're gonna do is write a PowerShell script that will install all of the updates for us and we don't even have to be present. It'll be silent, quiet, and run in the background without user interaction. For this tutorial, I'm going to be using the Server Academy IT Labs that are provided to all of our members. If you're interested in using these same IT Labs, you can click the link in the description and start a free trial. These labs are great for getting hands-on IT experience, and as long as you have an internet connection, you can run the IT Labs directly in your web browser. Here you can see me inside the IT lab and I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in so we can get started. So here I'm at the Windows catalog and I'm just gonna download some of these updates so we'll have something to work with. What I'm gonna do is just click on this update and just hit save as, and I'm gonna save the updates on the C drive under the updates folder. I'm just making a new folder calling it updates and I'll be saving my updates in there. Okay, so now that we have that out of the way, let's go ahead and close Internet Explorer. And let's close this catalog and we're going to start the PowerShell ISE and start scripting right away. So I'm going to hit start, type in PowerShell. And I'm going to right click on the PowerShell ISE and I'm going to say run as administrator. This is really important that we run it as an administrator and don't just start it, uh, you know, regularly. Okay, so once the PowerShell ISE opens, the first thing you want to do, if you're not using the Server Academy IT Labs, you want to make sure that your uh, execution policy is going to allow you to save and run scripts. So if it says remote signed, you're probably good. If it says restricted, uh, you're definitely going to want to change that. So we'll say set dash execution policy, and we're going to say unrestricted. So I'll type UNR, and then I'll press tab to autocomplete. I'll press enter. And uh, you know, it's just saying, hey, this is just helps protect you from scripts you don't trust. We'll say yes to all. And now if I press up arrow twice, I can get the execution policy and it's unrestricted. This is gonna allow me to save the scripts and execute them. All right, so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and do that. I'll hit file, save as. And we're gonna save this in the updates folder. So C, updates, and let's call this install MSU updates. So install MSU updates and hit save. So we're going to utilize a tool called WUSA. And if I type in that down here at the console and press enter, I can get this pop up that says the Windows Update Standalone Installer. Now we're going to call this and we're going to pass some of these arguments here. Like we're going to pass the update. We're going to pass quiet and no restart. Now uh, let's go ahead and click OK. Another thing that I want you to be aware of ahead of time is hit start and type in event viewer and this is going to allow us to open the windows logs so we can see how the windows updates installed some updates will not install because they'll be superseded by newer updates that we've already installed on the computer so uh, when we get the installation list of all the updates that have been installed it might look like it didn't inst install the updates and the reason for that will be stored in the windows logs so we're going to go under setup here we can see a couple sources from the wusa and it's just saying that it was unable to install this update under c updates um, so we're going to see information like this when we run the script. So let's go ahead, uh, unless it's against your work policy, let's go ahead and clear the log. And I'll just hit clear. You can save and clear. I'm in a lab environment, so I'm not too worried about it. I'm going to go ahead and clear these events. And here's an error there. I'll just click OK. And when we run the script and we start installing, we're going to come back here and we're going to refresh and see the events. So I'll leave that open in the background. So to get started, what we need to do is uh, make sure that we make a comment here and just say run the script as administrator. Okay, and we'll go down and say, uh, you know, possibly change this variable depending on where your updates are saved. And let's make it nice looking by putting this down on the next line. Okay, and we're going to go uh, make a variable. So we'll say dollar sign update path. And we're going to make the update path be equal to C colon backslash updates. And end quotes. Okay, so our updates are stored in the update path, which is C updates. And we can see that here. All right. Now we're going to make a record or a list of all the updates that we currently have installed. And we can do that with the get dash hotfix command. Now, if I press F5 and just execute the script, it's going to say, hey, it's going to be saved. Are you sure you want to do that? I'll say, yeah, in the future, don't tell me. That's fine. 
uh, what's going to happen is we're going to get an output down here and it's going to list all of the updates that we have currently installed on this computer. And right now it's not very many because it's my test lab. So uh, once we run the script and we install the new updates, the newer updates that we just installed will also be included in this list. So let's go ahead and do the greater than sign. And we're going to say, let's save this inside of update dollar sign update path. And we're going to do backslash old hotfix list.txt and end quotation marks. So now when we execute this, it's going to take this list and it's going to save it under old hotfix list.txt. So if I go here, I can see that list is here and we can open this. So we'll always be able to see um, what updates we started with when we have this list. All right. Since we generated that, it might not be a bad idea to just go ahead and comment that out so it does not recreate that file. And uh, let's go down to another line and let's say get a list of all updates in the folder. And we're going to make a new variable. We'll call it updates. Updates is equal to get dash child item. And we'll say dash path is update path. Now, if I execute this script, uh, we can call the variable down here in the console. So call updates, press enter, and we can see all the files that are listed in that directory. The problem is they're not all MSU files. We have the PowerShell script in here and we have the old hotfix. So if I was to uh, try and install the very first item in that list, it's actually the PowerShell script. And the second one is the hotfix list. So I'm, I'm calling the index of the array inside of these open and closed braces. So that's not what we want. So I'm gonna type in CLS and clear the screen. And up here, we're gonna pipe this to a where dash object. And we're gonna say, if I go down here and output updates again, we have this column name. Let's filter all the objects based on the name. So we're gonna say opening brace, dollar sign, underscore period, and we're gonna say name. And it's loaded into memory because I've already executed this command. So I can select name here, and we're gonna say where name is dash like. It's gonna be open quotation marks, star dot MSU, and, and quotation marks, and at closing brace. So we're gonna say get all the child items in our update path where the object name, this column, is like star.msu. So anything that contains this, or it basically ends with this, because we have the star, that's a wild card for any character, or any set of characters. So we're finding any file in that folder that has this extension. So let's go ahead and press F5. And now if we call updates, it's only gonna list the MSU files. All right, so that's perfect. Now that we have each of these, we can now run a for each loop and execute commands on each of these updates. The command we're gonna run is the WUSA command to install the update. So we're going to start with a for each loop. So we'll say for each and in parentheses, we're going to say for each update in updates. And we'll do an opening brace and go down and do a closing brace. So for each update that is in the object or the array updates, that means basically for each of these lines that is in this variable updates, I want you to execute the following code. And that's any code that we put in here. So we could say, uh, for example, make a comment, just call it logging. It will say write dash host, which is PowerShell's way of, uh, you know, writing to the console. We're going to say write dash host installing update. And we'll just say dollar sign update and end quotation mark. So now if we execute this, uh, we're going to get an output that says it's installing the update and then it's going to be uh, this update. And, and then it'll be that update after that. And it's going to go through each of them. That's what a for each loop does, right? So here we hit F5 and it says installing update and it lists all of the updates. All right, so let's assign a variable. Let's go up a couple lines and let's make a variable. Let's say get the full path to the update file. And we're going to make a variable called update file path. And update file path is going to be equal to update. And be sure it's update, not updates. If you have an S there, that's referring to the actual array, not the individual line in the array, which is update. And we're going to say full name. Okay. So if we go ahead and press F5, we can call update file path, press enter. And here uh, we can see that we have the full file path of that update. So the last thing we have to do is install the update. So we're going to say install the update. And we're going to say start dash process. And the reason why we're using start dash process is it allows us to pass the wait command or the wait argument. We could also just say W U S A and we could say slash update. Uh, update is going to be update path. And then we could say slash quiet and slash no restart. 
This line would work, however, on the first try, that is. Uh, however, it will kick off all the Windows updates at once. It will not wait for one to complete before running the next one. So that's not what we want. So we're going to delete that and we're going to use the start dash process. So we're going to start the WUSA process and then we need to pass an argument list. And that argument list is going to be exactly what we just uh, wrote. Open quotation marks, update, and we're going to pass the variable update file path. We'll end the quotation marks. We'll add a comma and we're going to say slash quiet and quotation mark comma and the last one will be slash no restart okay so we're going to install the update at update file path we're going to say uh, it's going to be quiet we don't want it to you know make a pop-up or show anything and then we're going to say no restart all right so now let's go down here and make a comment say create new hot fix list and let's just go up to this line and copy this uh, line all except for the comment Let's go down to the bottom. Let's run that and let's change from old. We'll say new hotfix list. Now let's go ahead and press F5. We'll execute the script and let's go back to the event manager or the event viewer and hit refresh. And here we have information. And so it says initiating changes for package, blah, blah, blah current state absent target uh, state is installed. Okay. So we'll hit refresh again. Here we have an error. Um, now, I don't know exactly why this update is airing out. We'd have to troubleshoot this. But for whatever reason, this particular update does not want to install. Here we have a warning uh, just saying that this update that we installed requires a reboot. And let's see, we have another update that was successfully installed. If I refresh, we got even more information. Here's another update that had an error when we tried to install it. Um, this could be several for several reasons. I mean, it says Windows 10 right there. Uh, these are supposed to be for Windows Server, but it's possible it's for the wrong operating system, things like that. Now, if you're not able to clear your events and you have a bunch of events in here, it's hard to find what you're looking for. You can click filter current log and we can change the event sources. If we go down all the way to the bottom, we can check WUSA and this other one here, which is servicing and click that checkbox. OK, so now when we click OK, we'll only get these types of events. So here's just another one saying that it was installed command line, blah, 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 successful. If we go back to the script, it looks like it completed. So we should have an old hotfix list and a new one. So what I'm gonna do is put this on the right side of the screen and I'll open the old hotfix and stick down the left. Okay, so here's our old list of updates that we had when we started and here is the new list. Now this will work no matter how many updates you have. It's essentially the same as you going through and double clicking on each update and running it manually. However, the script will automatically do it for you and you have the logs to understand why certain updates aren't there. Because if we take a look, if we compare here, we had a total of five updates and it looks like we only installed three updates. We have seven on this side, I think, yeah, seven. And we have four over here. So we installed three, there's a total of five. So uh, two of us gave two of us gave errors. We see two errors right here and it gives us the actual error ID that we can go and look up and figure out why it didn't install. OK, one of the updates requires a restart. So we're aware of that because of this warning. And uh, that is how you can go about writing a PowerShell script that will install your KB updates for you instead of you having to go through and do this manually. Now, I hope this helped you. I hope it saved you some time. If you're interested in more PowerShell training, consider taking the offer on the free trial at serveracademy.com. Just click the link below in the description. Also, we have the full uh, written tutorial in the link below of this video. So you can click on that and copy the code here directly. All right, as always, like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you thought of the video, and I will see you guys in the next one.